Okay, we're starting. All right, on the September meeting order, um, we can defer reviewing the minutes from the June meeting, I think. Is that, the last one? Is that our last meeting? Six twenty-five is the last meeting minutes that I have, or the meeting agenda. Sorry, agenda. Um, okay, so we'll defer those to our next meeting. Public speak here. All right. So the the only other stuff I want to talk is like basically get an update on like the school project where we are on that as far as yep. any energy efficiency stuff I, stuff that I meeting I attended where they were in all the ECMs and stuff yeah so the exciting thing is that uh, it, they put forward the, um, the guy who's working on the lead certification um, that's all moving forward I've connected them up with the sort of general uh, energy situation in the city because they're able to pull on the fact that like we get um, for whatever, like the the school doesn't build itself, doesn't provide itself through its own PV system, they'll be able to get through um, the net metering credits from Deerfield. So that was a additional bonus was they were going through the lead process, oh, okay. even that it's net metering credits. So that was good. Um, so they're going through that process. Everything looks good. Um, I think that we're, what were we talking 130 kilowatt system. I think is what we were looking at there. Yeah. Um, so nothing that was going to be from our previous review anywhere into kind of concern areas. Um, yeah, and compared to the school's usage. Yeah, so. compared to the current usage. So I think that we're all set there, um, but as it gets a little further along, we'll definitely sort of revisit that. Because like a lead level certification, they would I think they're going silver. Silver, okay. Yeah. Cool. We'd like to push them a little bit more, but. As far as like building measures, like like heating and cooling and stuff like that, there was some discussion of that. Is that, is that finalized yet? Is that going to go out in the bid, or is that something that gets decided later on? Because um, bids go out. Bids Tuesday, go out. Right? Yeah, bids are about to go out. Um, well, to the GC first is the first stage. Mm -hmm. um, and pre-qual for GC, right? No, we already pre qual no, Okay. It's already we've no, already no, finished no, all the good qual okay. stuff. Um, so we're down to three GCs, I think it was. Um, Do you remember and which three industries? I don't have my notes with okay, me. Fontaine's probably one, I'm guessing. Yep. Fontaine was one. Got any more? Remember? <laughs> Give me the names and I'll say yes or no. <laughs> Daniel O'Connell, local DOC, Doc. No. Maybe not. I'm going to do my school work anyway. Yeah. Who did the high school? The high school was done by Fontaine, wasn't it? Okay. Been, I'm not sure. I think so. Um, so yeah. Anyway, there was there was some review. There was a, there was actually one of the GCs did not pre-qualify because of some previous um, issues uh, with other school building works that they had done, and just their their um, so there there was one that was chosen not to pre-qualify, um, but then and also we went through all of the different subcontractors as well through the pre-qualification process. So um, so yeah, I think something everything's moving forward in that, um, and technically, hopefully, everything goes right. It'll be. Um, the GC will be hired by early December, and so as far as like the solar system, when they go, that goes out for bid. Like, how does that work? Like, I think that's only. I think it's actually only a subset of the electrical. Okay. I don't think it's got its own separate line. We well, had a two million dollar line item. Yeah, that's gonna, that's being reduced. That yeah, it's been spent in three different places by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd imagine yeah. the rotary and yeah. some other things. Yeah. Okay. Well, the rotary actually uh, technically isn't on the initial bid. It's been moved to an alternate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I and think that so was always the plan. It was yeah. going to be the first add alternate. It, it went back and forth. Okay. Yeah. There's been a lot of conversation. Okay. Yeah. It's actually not even the first add alternate. Okay. Um, but within all the current bidding that's and estimations, and we're at 90% um, estimated, um, it feels very confident that we're going to get. The maintenance building, which I think is the first Next bid, field. the first bid alternate. The terrazzo floors is second, rotary is third, and the track is fourth. And the track may or may not, with at least with the current bidding, um, and we're hoping that there's going to be some good competition that'll actually help drive the price even further down. Hmm. So we may get all four into the overall cost. Hmm. So, uh, 
technically roundabout as well. Rotaries and roundabouts are not quite the same. Huh? Is it the same? Rotaries and roundabouts are, yeah, the roundabouts are much smaller. Oh, okay. You have much more control, much more, you're intentionally slowing the speed of traffic down. There's like 202, that's a rotary, the one across the South Hadley Bridge. Yes. Yeah, okay. Isn't every roundabout supposed to slow traffic down? You gotta go around the thing that. Yeah, but rotaries, you can, South Hadley, you can go at full speed through there. Um, so you're you intentionally to trying to bring people down. Yes. <laughs> right. But you're trying to maintain uninterrupted traffic, but yeah. also change the angle of traffic so that you make it safer so you don't have any direct head on collisions. Right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all there. Um, so if they need any help or advice on selecting solar systems or anything like that, anything en energy related, yep. just let us know. Yep. All right. Then the next item I just have is kind of ongoing coordination with the city planning department. So I don't know if you wanted to give an update, Jamie. On, um, I know there's been a lot of big yeah, some great news grants and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So like that. we we well let's start with the big one. So we got the um, the um, Green Communities Grant for the uh, wastewater treatment plant and the, the energy uh, heating cooling system, um, the electric vehicle charging station, and there's another DPW. Um, I think lighting, lighting upgrades or something like that was in there. Yeah, it was a, it was a small component. Um, and so we have those two, so we're going to be two chargers, charging stations behind the mills, uh, which is what the green community is paying for. And then we have another one we're going to be putting in the building here with Eversource. And when we ever hear back from Mass Evit, um, we'll be uh, either we're, we'll pay for it one way or another, but you know, mm -hmm. like we either have some. Well, because Eversource is paying for the interconnection, and then the charger itself was Right, and I think that we can, if needed, we can find somewhere to how to purchase the, the chargers and, and we'll make that happen, even if we don't get the massive bit grant. Weren't we talking though about two here and four at the uh, no Yeah, funds? sorry, that each one was a double. Oh, okay. So, the, so I think, uh, yeah, two was four and one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, two stands, two plugs each stand. Okay. Yeah, I think there's... Or they're double set. There's like two connections on each. Yeah, you just have two yeah. charging cords per. Yeah. Stand. Yeah. Okay. That's standard. cool. Um, so that was great news. Um, I think it was in total about seven, eight thousand. Uh, Green communities was I think sixty nine, but then uh, the yeah, I don't remember the exact seven, amount. Sixty eight seven hundred. What's the Eversource was worth another fifty thousand or something like that that they're giving us too for all their. Underground work and interconnection fees. Right. Um, Actually, about chargers for the new school, is there any thought about having at least conduit and stuff put into the parking lot that if they wanted to do it, we wouldn't have to tear up parking lots and stuff? To, I guess it's part of the design of the parking lot of making sure that it's easily upgradable to put charging stations in. Let me follow up on that. That's a good idea. Because even if you just put conduit out of the ground that you can pull the wire later. Yeah that's a lot cheaper than... Well, even if we did, I mean, basically, we've got it going out to the maintenance building, assuming that gets in that alternate, so that would be an easy place to then pop back off of. There's yeah. probably lighting in the parking lot as well. Which lighting is? is the charger's 110 volt, typically. Yeah. Mm, no well, to you well, can do it at one time, but most stuff in public areas is 240. Okay, because um, you typically wouldn't be bringing 240 out to the lights. Yeah, because if you're doing 110, you're not really going to charge fast. You're at a yep. public place, and the idea is you're only there for a yep. couple of hours, whereas yep. 240, you can charge faster. Okay, two hour um, charge. Is a lot of yeah. So I'll, I'll bring that up, though. That's okay. a good point. Mm -hmm. So, um, three the green community dollars altogether. Altogether, it was 60. Across eight, all the projects. 68,700. Okay. Um, so 50,800 is the HVAC system at the wastewater treatment plant, 2900 for a furnace replacement at Love Field, and 15000 for two charging stations for four cars at Millside, you know, on, the, on the back side of the mills. Um, is that going to be in the big lot by Inza, that, air, that lot, or is it going to be the lot on the other side of the rail trail that's the little lot? No, no, it's going to be... 
I'm not sure which. It's got to be against the fence, so like up against the the rail trail. Um, that would be the one. But it, but I, I don't know behind which. It says which not, in that complex isn't municipally owned. Well, that parking lot though. It's not. All, all the back owned. halves of the parking lots are municipal. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Okay. But it's like I think it's like basically one space or two spaces mm -hmm. deep, maybe part of the the, the driving aisle. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where the exact property yeah, lines are. But so that's why it's going to be it's going to be on the city property on the back half. Um, okay. I think but it's not, there's that? there's one of there's one of those traffic islands has a uh, what's it a converter like an inverter or converter the electrical mm -hmm. it's got the big electric box already there transform transform thank you um, and so I think that's we're going to go from that transformer underneath the parking lot to the other side of the mm -hmm. okay I'll have to look to see where that is I'm not sure which. Which mill building that's behind? I forget off the top of my head. Um, but it might be closer to Hinsa. I think is. Um, I'm looking at the side of the picture. There right actually now. could be multiple transformers behind there. It's yeah. Yeah. Oh, here it is. I think it's right next to New City. Because there's two transformers right there, so it's probably those four spots right there, would be my guess. Yeah, or there's another one like here. Oh, okay. Or on this island here. So I'm not sure. It's going to be right behind Millside Park, or yeah, because it would probably make more sense to put it over closer to Millside Park. Even though I work at East Works, it'll be closer to me. If it's a little spot, but yeah. Millside isn't very other than during events. Isn't very heavily utilized. No, no, no. This no. is but really off topic. New city. I mean, having the breweries right. back there, it would just be probably a smarter place to put it as opposed to just behind mm -hmm. East Works, which isn't the parking back there is definitely not used for any kind of. Yeah, it's Ritz it's definitely it's definitely not behind East Works. Okay. So yeah, that's gonna be closer to. It's either New City. Mill One Eighty or yep. New City. Or, yeah. I know it's clearly off topic. Is there ever plans to open up that driveway that connects that parking lot that you can get to Ferry Street from that parking lot, as opposed to always having to go off Pleasant where Street? The, where the fence is with the chain. Yeah, yeah the chain. Yeah, it's opened up when it's open. Yeah, that's yeah. It's, a, it's for emergency vehicles yeah. and yeah. access. It's not. Yeah. They were directing traffic out of. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice if that was permanent, because then you could always go into those buildings from ferries. And from yeah, there was concern places. about the, the bike crossing, path the bike crossing right. and having it open all the time, so right. it's sort of... Yeah, there's not a marked crossing or anything else, it just no. crosses, yeah. yeah. Um, cool, well that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do we have a groundbreaking plan yet for those, or is that going to be wait all the way to the spring at this point, or... I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm sort of just getting up to speed on it. Um, so and then as far as the PVI or the PVPC yeah. planning stuff. And so we got funded on two out of the three. Okay. Um, so we did not get the technical assistance for clean energy planning. So we had asked for um, the, so we got these two, this one and this one. The uh, green application prep, green energy data analysis evaluation, uh, procurement for program and projects, and non-green community clean energy project management. Okay. Um, but for whatever reason, it's interesting why the energy planning they didn't. Yeah. Because we were already a green community, so they thought we should already have an energy plan. Are we redoing that anyway? Or, or just overall city like that. Yeah. Master plan. Master plan. We're actually studying right now. There's a couple of initiatives right now. I don't know the actual master plan. There's the downtown plan. There's the right. so arts that's and culture plan going on. Right. Well, I think it's revising, and it's, then they'll be going into what is the master plan. Exactly. So it's not. So we're, we're it's, kind it's of updating chapters. As, as we get yeah. grants, we're asking consultants to also. Provide data and updates that would then feed into an update for the master plan. But it wouldn't be a new master plan, it'll just be like updating and synthesizing. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're going to do housing, a housing plan next, housing production and market and marketing plan. Um, and so then I think in a year or two, we would be trying to synthesize all these different disparate plans and to get them into one.
coherent. Is there any thoughts about the energy plan portion of the master plan of looking into that? Or hmm. okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if there have been if there's a plan for it or but there, if that's there should be an energy plan, right? Because there may not be a chapter in there that focuses on, on we have a climate and sustainability section that's coming out of the um, MVP grant. Do green communities not require an energy section in the master plan? We don't think there was any linkage between the two now that we're directly with. Yeah. I think there was but an energy. The MVP stuff is more, I think, is, is funneling back into some of that stuff. Right. So. But if it's something that we think we is just want to want to look at, then um, I don't know if this PVPC, any of that, that technical assistance can go towards something like that or could, would you email us that chapter? The energy like, chapter? Yeah, look up to see what it, what specifically, if it, if it is under sustainability or if it has its own standalone and email it out to this group. Yep. Just so that we could see what there is. and See if it's out of date, see if it needs to be updated. Maybe right. it doesn't even need to be updated. Because, I mean, that could be something for this group to work on. Would be, I mean, this would be the forum for to, to yep. update that chapter. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, no problem. Um, do you want, I'll do you know, the, um, whatever is sort of relevant. Yeah, anything related to energy that's in there. Yeah. It was the last item that we didn't get. Correct. So again, no, no. But we did get the non-green community clean energy. Yeah, the project management, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't, and, and I guess I don't really know what the, well, I'm not really clear from that discussion with, with Catherine way back when about what exactly is, yeah. each of these was funding. Um, it seemed that it was more so funding PVPC to do stuff, do stuff for this committee. Yeah. Um, and if we can, if so if we, if we identify projects, sort of bring it to them and they kind of figure out which hours they're billing it towards. So maybe we could have one of the oh. I was thinking maybe we could have them look into collecting all the city accounts and setting up the online resources of that resource mm -hmm. and setting up the groundwork for the tracking of the data that we'd always talked about. I mean, yeah. have them do that. You know one of the things that's we're also looking Jeff and I were in conversation is that um, we want to be more prepared for next year's Green Communities Grant mm -hmm. um, so that we can put some more things in for that application. Um, and so I think he was talking about using some of that to help prepare for that grant um, too. So, but, so it's a little different, but it's similar stuff. I think it's ready. We can reach out to them and start to see what they're doing. Right. So it would be nice to know. I'm Partially for the city's own defense to know if we're close to the contracts that we have with the solar utilities just by getting a handle and grasping, tracking the data. So, Jamie, were you, did we ever tell you about that situation? It caught bits and pieces of it. We have so like we have 20 two, different accounts. Yeah. So, we have the two solar facilities we have Oliver Street and we have the Deerfield facility that uh, Mayor Kevin signed the contract for before she left office. Like okay. Before. Okay. Right. Um, and those two contracts combined could potentially obligate the city um, for more electricity credits than we pre consume annually as a city. Um, so that's probably kind of there's the metering credit. So every kilowatt hour this building consumes, mm -hmm. we can offset it with a solar facility, and we trade those to the solar facility, and they cash it in in the market to get paid. And that's how they finance the systems, and they sell us the electricity back at a lower rate. Right. That's how the contract's set up. But we have to have the consumption to get back to them so they can use those net meeting credits to get the SREC money, is what they call it. Right. It's the same thing as for a house system, but it's on a much bigger scale in the city. So the first contract subscribed probably, what, 30 40% of our city usage, somewhere around there. And the Deerfield contract was just signed on that line, could potentially put us over 100% of city usage if there was a really good solar year. So ironically, the better it is solar-wise, the worse it could be for the city because we could be in be breach of contract. Now, I have a question, Buck. When you did that research, though, were you looking at just the supply 
charges or the supply and the delivery charges? It wasn't, I wasn't looking at dollars, I was looking at kilowatts. Kilowatts is what you need. Kilowatt hours is the yeah, metric. That's the commitment, it's not dollars. Right, but when they, but what they put to our bill is straight money. And we get a credit, $10,000, $100,000, right. whatever it is. But they and can't what, get a credit for more than what we actually So if we only consume 1,000 kilowatt hours as a city as a whole, and they produce 1,200 kilowatt hours of solar between the two of them, we don't have, we can't give them 1,200 kilowatt hours of solar usage because we don't, we haven't consumed that. So they are well, 200 kilowatt hours of credit short that they can't cash in that they're depending on financing from. Uh, what I will say is from communicating with Eversource, and Eversource is the slipperiest fish you could ever talk to, right? Yeah. But um, because we also, for my company, we do net metering credits for municipalities too. Yeah. And they have been slippery about this, but it does seem like we can also give, we can sign towns up for more than just the kilowatt supply needs because we can also help pay for delivery charge. So it, yeah, no, you can apply the net metering credit as a dollar. Yeah, so yeah, it can go towards delivery charge as well. Correct. So that's where it does get to be that if we even if we we can cover additional cost for the delivery charge and not just the supply. But amount. again, the issue is that in order for the private entity to benefit from to get those S recs, they have S -Rex, to have the consumption. They can't. The they can't get credit for something that we can't. We're not using. Dollars are different. So right. like on Dollars, my home yeah. house, I say I, I, my solar system produces, or I consume a thousand kilowatt hours in one house. I have to produce about a thousand forty-four, I think, to cover my seven dollar customer charge plus my usage. Because those forty-four kilowatt hours covers about seven dollars worth of customer charge. That's in the dollar forms. Mm -hmm. But I still only get one SREC. So I get 1.044 SRECs for that day because I over consume now. Say it was the flip side, I can uh, produced only a thousand kilowatt hours and consumed a thousand forty four. I'll have a little residual bill because I didn't. I had over consumed what I produced. Plus, I'm only going to get one S rec as opposed to one point zero four four S recs. I don't. So that I don't think that it's that their S recs are based on consumption. Their yes. their S recs are based on yeah. no their production. Have, yeah. And our contract is based on kilowatt hours, so that's what we're committing. So they're selling us the, the kilowatt hour back at six cents, but they have to get the credit for the 20 something cents that we consumed. And it you're, has you're, to be able to right. it once you get that credit. That credit applies to the bottom line of the Yeah, bill. it just turns into cash. Yeah. But yeah. there's the kilowatt hours have to match up. Hmm. Okay. Because you can't virtual net meter for more than what. It's the same thing like virtual net metering. If I overconsume and I get my uncle that lives down the street, I can virtual net meter with his house too. Mm -hmm. But I can only give so if I don't have enough solar to get both of us, we still have to pay a bill. Or if I have too much solar, it just sits on my bill as a credit and goes negative. But we don't have that. They don't have that option. Okay. As a solar producer, as opposed to both the solar producer and the consumer on the same house, it's different. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Because it's separate. Yeah. Do you, I used to think when I when we did the net metering deal in East Long Meadow, I thought that that dollar only went against the actual consumption, but it doesn't. It just shows up in the bill, comes right off the bottom yeah. line. And so whatever you pay the utility company, it's a dollar that's credited towards that bill. Bottom line is there wasn't an energy committee when Mayor Kadger signed that contract, and we could possibly be in breach of the contract if solar is really good in here. And that's, we encourage reducing our own energy usage. Right. Yeah. So isn't so, that a little, um, I don't know, there, there's Poor decision, like, yes. yes. Or, or just oh. that it, we know. It, it just wasn't understanding the issue, and it's a very so, complicated right. issue. Right. And she we're was, not at this point even, and I, I was looking it up and I couldn't find it. I was contacted from somebody in the city, I think it might have been on the finance department, perhaps, looking for points of contact and things like that, because there was an attempt several months ago to try to reach out to the Deerfield facility. Was um, Tracy within the uh, mayor's office? Within was the mayor's she office. with me and I directed her to talk yeah. to you. And I, we didn't have much of a dialogue. I provided the contacts and that, that was the last I heard of it. But we, nobody, I have no idea what's happening in Deerfield. So if Deerfield isn't producing anything, it's a non-issue. Yeah. Um, yes, they haven't looked up to their side of the deal at that point either. 
that facility was behind schedule and part of the contract that was signed was saying that they guaranteed they'd be fully operational by X date and they're not because we actually had the former city solicitor review the contract mm -hmm. and he said there might be a way to get out of the contract because they failed to meet certain terms of it so if it did come as a problem we might be able to exit the contract and not be in breach of contract so that was but that okay. was all kind of inside so so it was back in July actually that yeah. Tracy and I had a dialogue so but bottom line, I have yeah. no idea where that went from the city standpoint what we'd like to know is on a monthly basis as we get new bills what is our month-to-month -month usage of the city so we can keep track of it and then in parallel also keep track of what is our month-to-month -month obligation with the solar facilities so then we can kind of see are we in balance are we getting to a point where the solar may exceed our usage right just to kind of be prepared for if that situation were to occur and as soon as the new school goes in it makes it much better because we're switching a lot of natural gas and oil heating from the old White Brook and the other three schools to electric air conditioning and stuff. So okay. our electric bill for the city is going to go up as soon as the new school goes in. Right. So it becomes less of a problem. Right. And the interesting thing is it's going to go up even more because there will be some period of time in which we'll continue to consume power at the existing schools. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, and it may be multiple years because schools generally don't go away. The whole process. Oh, we're investing in away pretty quickly. Well, <laughs> they may not. Some of them may not be divested right. as well. Yeah. They may the, remain on the on the city's. Yeah, from, uh, the, yeah, from, yeah. From, from the downtown planning grant. It's yeah. But quick doesn't happen because you've got to go through a whole uh, declaration of schools from the school department okay. first, as mm -hmm. being surplus, and then you have to go right. through a procurement process. And, and, and even then, there's been from the community, the community interest. There's a lot of community interest in making these buildings. Parking garage. No. <laughs> yeah. Community spaces. And, yeah. um, Center needs to be a parking garage. You know, so that that's part of... Maple needs, needs to be a park. <laughs> what about the playground? <laughs> we'll see what the consultants come up with, but the... We could be in a situation where the... the the building stays, yeah. Well, at least White Brook, though, which is uh, a horrendous White building. Brook will right, like White White definitely White the White smallest. Brook is definitely the smallest. That's down. And the, and, the, and the other three schools will be... You know, but the Passive but the community is interested in now, and we'll, we'll know in yeah. a couple months. So, so that's what our discussion about the energy use. Right. So if we can get PDPC to kind of, because one thing you can do with EverSource is like I do with my own, you have an online account. From what I heard, you can actually create an online username and then link all the city accounts to that username. So when you log in with one username, you can see every city account as opposed to the 20 something bills, paper bills that the DPW is getting and paying every month. Okay. So it'd make it much easier to track that data. Is that something that is complicated to, so, no. to set up? No, but it just takes time and that might be something that PVPC could do. Part of it internally is, is the and different, then, there's at least three different departments involved. There's DPW, I think, who's paying the bills these days. There's the mayor's office, there's the finance office, and there's a the school department. And they kind of each have a role yeah. in this, and thus far nobody. Has Tracy only was supposed to get my meeting with Tracy. She, yeah. she was supposed to be helping work to consolidate some right. of that stuff, and I've got to meet with her soon because I've got to get some of the information for the green communities report out of her right. soon. So, um, and maybe not even bring just that back up. setting up that account, but also then setting up, I say, a spreadsheet or some kind of tracking mechanism so that every month it's basically a routine where, when the new bills come out that a tracking sheet gets updated with everything and that can be just shared within the city so we know on a month to month basis where we right. stand with that stuff. Someone okay. has to own it, somebody that yeah. understands because if nothing yeah. else you want to check are we getting the credits, are we, you know, yeah. we're getting billed for this, is that credit getting properly? Find some way to build. automate it or to standardize it or make it as least painful as possible to do that kind of data tracking. That would probably be very advantageous. Okay. It's as simple as there is a way to look into an Eversource account online and download the data by hitting a button in Excel or something like that. You know, some stuff like that that could be set up. I don't know what Eversource's rights are as far as their website to be able to download data um, through program interfaces, but something like that. So that could be a use for the PVPC money. Okay. Um. And we'd hope to get some extra people on the committee to maybe spearhead that, but everybody that's, mm. that thought was going to do it then just kind of disappeared mm. off the face of the earth. So I think you just carried them all away. <laughs> There's a lot of jargon that goes on here. So <laughs> yeah. I can see. Well, the other guy, he was more interested in the municipal light. 
uh, yeah. uh, documentation yeah. and yeah. stuff, so you can't um, a good enough second prompt. Hmm. <laughs> so I'll reach out to Catherine and just sort of broach that with her and see if it's something that we can do, but then I think I'll have to defer to... Yeah, just, just basically said that we would like to track all our, the electric consumption for the city and the solar production that the city's obligated for and have some kind of automated way to track that on a regular basis. Well, and, and like I said, I think I need to follow up with Tracy again. I think that she was working on some of that. So before yeah. we put a formal request to PVPC, we should see whether or not the mayor's office is starting to do some of that on its own. Um, so okay. I, I can follow up. So with if you want to follow up Tracy and then yeah. let me know if you want me to reach out to Catherine about that okay. at PVPC and, or then we can. Yeah, we'll interface all that stuff and okay. make it work. Um, and I've been keeping a list of some things that we just talked about briefly, the different meetings um, about possible green communities grants going forward. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had, you and I had talked about it briefly, so yeah. um, I don't know if we probably don't need to go through that now, but we can. Yeah, good time. There's really not much on this agenda. Well, I think that's part of the, as we're getting the green community reporting together, it's also using that image the information i know one of the ones that jeff and i had talked about particularly was trying to like put like maybe like look at a mini split into the park and rec um trailer out there as opposed to using propane some things like that is right. things that we had talked about yeah um so he was i forget what the stage he was going to be bringing that to some of the city planning visioning kind of stuff and then start to bring that back okay. um, and circle back around so yeah um so I don't I don't know if he's where that's gone that end, but it is okay. that definitely one of the bullets that I have. The other one, um, school reuse. There was something about a school energy grant to begin upgrading systems before we hand the buildings over. A brief talk about that. Um, well, let's looking at if with the city goes through its process and decides we want to keep Pepin, for instance, then let's. Get right. grant money now to start to do some more environment, do and more uh, upgrades to the building um, right. through the grant, as opposed to just waiting until it's has to come out of the city. So. Right, right, right. Um, doing some, there's more space on the Oliver, Oliver Street landfill for more leasing for solar. The, um, the air source heat pump at the parking rack and uh, highway garage furnace replacement. So they use the used motor oil there. There may be physical space, but. Again, there isn't a capacity. The, the benefits yes. the city realizes from that space is not just renting space. Space is cheap, but mm -hmm. it's being able to allocate net metering credits. Yeah. So that goes back to the net metering credits that you know we're already concerned with the Deerfield that would compound on the problem. Well, no, no. That's only if we set it up so that we're getting. If we just leased it, just but, but the land is cheap. If there's nobody leasing property, just to lease property. They, leasing property. They get a little bit extra SREX with the new part of the smart program because yeah. it's a brownfield yeah. site. That's what the value is. That's the additional value of but the But the real value the is the ability to net meter and benefit from yeah. it. And that's already, as we've talked about, is already pretty well committed. So how are these things like um, all the private solar fields you're going in, like you keep getting requests for planning board approval, how are those? Although not many of them actually move forward. You know, there's been a couple have been permitted. Some that, like the Williston facility even, has been permitted for two or three years now, and they haven't actually moved forward. Yeah. Because there was the Park Street one and the uh, South Street one. What about the Park, yeah. the Park yes. Street one? So I'm going through. Park, Park Street, Street I think, was approved. It was approved. Yeah, but then, then we've yeah. got a trail leaseman out of it. Yeah. Um, but that's a private landowner, yeah, not, right. not the Williston school. Right, right. right. Um, and Wils but Williston had their own property. Right. That was approved as well. Right. And then there's something wrong. Yeah, I mean those third party they either, for example, try to go to municipalities, they can sign up homeowners. Um, you can do community solar type stuff. So like in Westfield, that huge solar farm that went in on Route two oh two just mm -hmm. uh, north of Barnes. That's a community solar project where people are living in apartments and stuff. They can net meter with that facility. So they get the benefits of having solar as if it were on their roof, right? Um, but they can't physically do it because they're in an apartment or their rental or something like that. So mm -hmm. that's some things that people can do with that. 
Um, some of them now just do them operate and operating as a third party uh, generator owner, just like somebody that owned, you know, uh, Millstone Nuclear or somebody, you know, okay. on much smaller scales. Mm -hmm. but. Right, right. But program certainly, it's changing. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. are trying to get in That's line right. for the program that was there. Yeah, because I mean, all in anticipation of what the next program, what the next program is going to look like. Because the first time. Oliver start, Street, that was even before SREC 1, wasn't it? Or is that SREC 1? It was in SREC 1. Yeah. Yeah. So that's SREC 1, which that's what I'm in, is very lucrative. SREC 2, I think, is what the Deerfield site's in. Maybe, yeah. Um, which is still pretty lucrative. And now they're in this new one called the SMART program, which is not as lucrative. But the cost of solar has come down mm -hmm. drastically in the last seven years. Well, so right. Now it's going back up. So. Mm -hmm. So as part of this, as part of this, um, the city light plant, is that yeah, the helpful? city light plant is just a vehicle. It's just a that's name the vehicle name. in which a telecommunication facility can be legally created. Right, but yeah. they could also do power or well, well, certainly could. They could, but you'd have to buy all the lines from every source and create a municipal yeah. utility. And there have been towns across the country that have tried that, and it's a very, very steep road to do because every source owns all the power lines and poles. Right. So if you were to set up your own East Hampton Municipal Electric Department, you'd have to buy all that stuff from every source, and then find bonds and stuff to pay for it to finance it. So that's a huge. I mean, Boulder, Colorado tried to do it for years against Excel Energy, and they finally gave up. And some of that even plays into the telecommunication discussion because you still need to put the wire somewhere. Yeah, lease them on the poles. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's why all the, the munis like Holyoke and Westfield had done. And Because yeah. they, yeah. the they own all the top. They own all the poles. So it's right. very easy for them to throw up fiber on the poles because they're their poles. Right. Whereas for us, we'd have to throw them up on an Eversource pole or a Horizon it. pole. And you got to pay for it. And there's right. some interesting economies of scales and probably even some interesting accounting. Yeah. strategies of how you might be able to spread some of the costs across you know, telecommunication and electric pieces of the business. Because Charter does the same thing. They pay Eversource for the poles right. to put their cable up on the poles. Right. So it would be similar to what we, we would be like Charter trying to buy space on the utility lines to put up a municipal fiber. Early on, I don't know if any of you guys remember, you probably worked in town, there was a company called Fiber One. Fiber One was out there stringing fiber on poles you know, at night essentially, oh, without okay. any approvals, and got caught doing it. But, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> How did they think they wouldn't get caught? <laughs> huh. So, yeah, there's a lot of, it's just the municipal light plant is just a legal entity to right. be able to start doing that. Okay. The discussions, I guess, mm -hmm. is basically that. Right. But, yeah, trying to create our own power plants. I mean, you can create your own power plant and sell power back as a, Third part. I mean, we could easily develop our own generating station, right. and you connect in just like every other generator connects into the transmission system. But that doesn't. Do that's not only, that's not being the distribution company trying to stuff where we right. cut every source out of the loop. You can't do that. Well, one of the things I know that we're doing in our company is starting to look though at with the whole aggregation side of it is to mix together increasing generation. So putting in a power plant on Oliver Street and then getting the town's aggregation, and then we're able to produce some of that power locally and put it straight into the grid locally. Right. So there's, there are some ways that's not buying out the supply side, the, the delivery side, right. which is the poles, but you can change the supply side of things a little bit easier. Yeah, so you can, so right. you've always had a third party supplier, so we could, East Hampton Municipal Power Plant could be a third party supplier and people in town buy from them through a bilateral Right, because that's, I mean, that, I do the, um, energy choice. Yeah, I mean, Eversource so. has to buy it on the, the the going market rate. They don't make any profit on the generation, so it's right. very hard for a third party supplier to actually give you less costs. <laughs> it gives you a steady cost, is, mm -hmm. which is right. sometimes beneficial for municipalities, but to get a cheaper cost, unless you're directly have a source that you can get cheaper power, it's very hard to do when you're paying. When Eversource doesn't make a profit on it, Every third party supplier has to make a profit or they're not a company unless they're doing it out of their own goodwill. So, what so I the did nice thing about cities is that we exactly. don't have to make a profit. Exactly. So then then you have no profit against no profit, and so then there might be some competition. You might be able to get a cheaper rate. 
one thing I did hear from you, you probably know of Jim Laval, the head manager of HGE. &E. So apparently the SMART program excludes municipally owned electric utilities from participating in the SMART program oh, because yeah. the private utilities lobbied to push the municipal guys out because apparently the municipal guys much were greatly advantaged in the previous SREC programs and took advantage of that. HGE &E took great oh, yeah. advantage of that and as a result of that there was some pushback to kind of mm -hmm. level the playing field. So GE &E can't participate in hmm. the current SMART program. Hmm. I didn't realize that. So, so. All right, well, we're getting close to 6 o'clock. Yeah. So as far as the other stuff, um, what's the time left for that? Because that's in the spring? February, usually. Nice okay. Yeah, no, we got to get the grant. we got to get the app, the, uh, the, the reporting the report in, and then that all happens later. Okay. So yeah, and this is all And the reporting started, or at least the... No, the we, I mean, we've got... Well, 75% of it's all automatically generated um, through Eversource and Columbia Gas's reporting into it, but then there's additional stuff that I've got to get from the city still. Um, and you've got a piece of it, and most of it's going to come from upstairs. Yeah. So, um, and then I've got to get that stuff uploaded. And usually they don't send it out, I think it's more like the first week of November or something like that. Okay. Is when they actually get the new form reporting form. form out to you to start to process, and then it's due by either the end of December or beginning of January, I think it's end of December, so. Usually mm -hmm. like six weeks turnaround. So. But yeah, I'm gonna get on that soon. So. And the only other business I had is I attended, um, they had all the different um, the committee. committees yep. and stuff mm -hmm. at New City Brewery last week. So I sat there with a whole bunch of other committees and talked to no people in an hour and a half and left early. Um, so was it not attended by anyone other than the committee Warner? chairs for all the stuff basically was, there was like no public there they were all across so the street going to the concert okay and the, the food but nobody came into the, the oh, private it was, it was even listed okay. as a private party on the side of new yeah. city so there was nobody there i mean jeff was there he talked for a little bit but it, there was yeah it was so wasted there oh, some last one they had last year or the year before and it was actually it was reasonably good attendance there but it was held at the high school well, and we like my wife had said, she's like, it wasn't even posted on like the East Hampton Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew it was, like, she never knew it was occurring uh, if she hadn't talked to me. Um, yeah. So, like, publicly, it wasn't really advertised much. I guess Lindsay Rothschild was the one leading it. She was the one that sent me all the emails. Okay. She's the one that's running for city council, right? Yeah. yeah. That's too bad. So, <laughs> that was an update from that. So, I'm glad I didn't waste your that. guys' time that's going to that. So, that was. I, I, I represented it, but there was yep. <laughs> 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 other chairs who certainly weren't going to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they were serving during the meeting, that would be fine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, no, there are people drinking. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't I, was, I just yeah. didn't feel like it. I was just, because uh, I think I just finished mowing the lawn, took a shower, I was exhausted. I was like, yeah, whatever. But, okay. All right. So that's all I have. Anybody else have anything to discuss? No. All right. So as far as the next meeting, should we? I guess that's one thing. Should we keep this this monthly? Should we switch to quarterly? What do you guys want to do? Switch to every other month? Maybe start with every other month. I'll okay. come in and see. Because I mean, we obviously skip. Wait, because unless we almost get three months. Point. Yeah. Well, November is going to be right around Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so the meeting would December be the twenty sixth. November 26th would be the fourth Tuesday, which is Thanksgiving week. So I'm around, so I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to yeah, me. It should be around you. So we can still keep that on that Tuesday. It's not like it's really the holiday yet. Okay. Um, so we'll let's plan let's for 26th at 5 p.m. I'll email Barbara to move us to an every other month construct. Okay, and then that'll skip uh, Christmas Eve. Yep, so yeah, Christmas will be gone <laughs> uh, in October, yeah. and then we'll, um, uh, I will definitely have some green community stuff to report next time, and we can follow up with PPPC, maybe we'll have some stuff to report on that development, so. Okay. Yeah, so Sounds good, so we'll plan November 26th at 5. Great. And I will send out the energy chapter, and... Well, uh, working with Marion on the reporting and whatever okay. you hear about. Um, after. And then you're going to follow up.
find out with Tracy as far as the... Yeah, when I talk to her about getting the stuff I need for Green Community, I'll find out what's, what the sort of stage is in terms of them actually getting around to consolidating stuff. So. Okay. Great. Thanks, thanks everybody. Excellent. Great. I make a motion to adjourn. I second the motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Yeah. Cool. Are you guys getting the... Can we go to a wake now? I'm gonna go to pack meeting. Cub Scout Pack 209 meeting. Not yet. My new, my new tiger. I didn't really